All right, so today we are back with another Tosi tutorial, and this time for Solo Roosevelt Legendary. Um, we're going to play pretty much the same build as we did last time, so we have two variations. Once with a striker chest, which is for the boss room, and our standard build for the whole run. The only thing that changes here is we are running a chest to obliterate for the main part of the run, and for boss we switch to one chest copy somewhere else and the striker chest. Um, we're gonna play three blue cores again, as well as Memento, but you're always free to change that up and maybe put on some more reds. Our skills are shield and turrets, and for weapons we're gonna go with the Sand Elmo again. Secondary doesn't matter too much, I always prefer to have an SMG here, that's what I would recommend as well. Um, and Wavering is a really great talent for secondary in this specific scenario. And something like a Banshee or MP7 works really well here. We're going to go for Gunner Specialization again, for mainly for Armor and Kill, Ammo Regen, and the Minigun itself, which I will use in this run as well. And yeah, that's basically it. Uh, we're just going to start the run. Um, like always, what I'm showing here is not the only way to clear it. It might not even be the best way. That's just a way I like figure it out to basically show it to you so maybe you can be able to get your first clear or just uh, like get into it so we're gonna throw the turret and I'm gonna aggro and run back the turret staying around here can help us out sometimes it just doesn't like sometimes they just ignore it and that's the thing as well you can do the same thing I do and it just doesn't work for you that's sadly legendary after all. And there's a few things that can change enemy behavior, such as uh, weather is a big thing, sadly. And just general RNG. So we've got to try to kill everything here. We have uh, medics, as well as drones, which are our priority here. For example, now with it being nighttime, they push me very hard, which probably won't happen for you if you. Um, if you do it yourself, because while testing that never really happens too too much. But yeah, that's, I can only show like one run, which uh, can just change between. Right, so we got the initials and the first um, the first spawn. So we have one respawn with it being two medics. So we try to get the medics quickly before they pick up everything, if possible. Which just sometimes isn't. I'm gonna try to kill the drones here, maybe. But yeah, that's uh, really annoying. So we got the red medic at least. And we got the reviving drones. So now we only have the yellow medic. But it looks like he's hiding in Arnia as well. We have uh, some dogs. But we can just chill around here and let them push us. Yeah, this guy is gonna make our life hell. But that's, um, it just takes a bit of time, but it's pretty safe in itself still. I try to run the lot with being more aggressive, but it's just super inconsistent, and I don't wanna, like, show something that is very inconsistent. So now we have, uh, mostly two dogs as well as one red. What can happen here for you is that they don't aggro on you, so that the dog's just sitting in the background and basically don't aggro. Um, so I'm gonna be a bit more aggressive, but you can always wait until they push you, basically. Dogs are not too big of an issue for us, because we have the strong shield as well as Memento. So we can just ideally shoot the red points, you can see on the uh, legs, basically. That puts them to sleep for a second, and we can just shoot the legs to deal direct damage, or if he's running on this, we just crack, basically, the body and kill him that way. Alright, that was the first room. It did not go perfectly for us, because we got like pushed very hard there, but uh, that's how it is sometimes. And for this room I have two different strategies. I'm gonna show the one that is a little bit more aggressive, just because it is a bit quicker as well. We're just gonna run up to here, throw a turret somewhere around here, and just gonna take a few steps back and basically go in some sort of head glitch up here 
we try to open on the mini tanks to get, just get rid of them quickly because they can make our life hell. So there's two mini tanks here, a yellow one, which we just killed, and a red one, which usually is somewhere on the left side. There he is. And now we just uh, basically start on shooting everything around. There's gonna be a respawn, which you see there happening, with two rushers and a sniper. If we don't kill the sniper, he will, at the end of the room, will just run away. So I always try to focus him. If possible. But if he runs away, it's not too bad as well. It doesn't kill the run or something. You would ju just have to deal with it in the next room. Um, basically, this is the more aggressive strategy. What, what you could do here as well, if you're not too comfortable with doing what I did, is um, just triggering and running back. Like to here. But yeah, we're just gonna pick up our turrets. I'm um, gonna pick up some memento stacks to fill up our memento. With the filled, we are always talking about the gray little arm. And the little bar below the arm itself is how full we are. So we wanna have 30 trophies for the full buff. And then we have to pick up one trophy every five minutes to keep it active. But yeah, basically here, as soon as we run past or to this ammo box, we're going to trigger. So what we want to do here is we're going to throw our turret on this forklift over there. And then we try to kill those snipers, which are there. It's going to be two snipers. We want to kill them first. So we're going to run up. That was not good, but it works. And we're just going to start shooting. As soon as we get a grenade from the grenade dog in our face, which will happen every second, um, we're just going to back up. Yeah, there was a grenade. So I will back up. We have both snipers alive, which is not great, but it's fine. I like to play around here, because it's still somewhat aggressive. Um, the main reason for that is we're gonna have two drones later, and if we don't kill them, they're just gonna spam us. So for that reason, I like to be aggressive. I'll show some options as well for playing. Because we can always go back somewhere around here, play behind the forklift with a shield, and just use the scope on our ammo to make it easier for us. Um, this because I had a few questions on other runs, the scope, you can open it by basically, if I aim, so I hold like the red mouse button on PC, and I just press melee, or which is a tap on default, I can open the scope on the Elmo. So yeah, I want to be a bit more aggressive here personally, just because there will be drones, and if we don't kill them quickly, they are just going to make our life hell. So there's the purple drone, and there should be a red drone as well somewhere. We got some rushers, but this is very, very tame this room. So we can always just play this a lot more defensive. But yeah, I think we have the... Yeah, we have that weird glitch happening, which is perfect because I can show it. Basically, whenever you clear the room, it can be that one enemy gets stuck behind this gate. So you see him on the minimap, what you want to do is, I, want, I will just shoot a bit. That usually triggers him, and you can basically find out where he's standing sometimes. Yeah, there he is. It is weird. We can shoot through here, he can shoot through here. What you can do if you can't find him is you can just reset the mission itself. But uh, yeah, that's at least I can show it here, because that happens a lot. Um, I'm going to swap to sticky EMP for here. Um... And what we're gonna do is, we have two grenade dogs, uh, two dogs. So we have grenade dog here and sniper dog here. It can be the other way around, so that grenade dog would be there and sniper there. But basically what we want to do is we're gonna go over here, double tap our skill for the sticky, and then just start shooting. So the dog's in beat now. We can detonate it to do some damage, and then we shoot the legs to kill him. And after we're just gonna start to kill all the normal enemies. We still have grenade dog, but he gets in beat by the explosion of the sniper dog. And we're just, just gonna shoot the legs if we can see it, otherwise just center mass, body, works as well. We wanna be quick here, because we get the chopper with the changa spawning there, and normal enemies spawning here. So we're gonna, just gonna go back to here, stand around here to just kill the normal enemies quickly. And then we start on changa. Changas, like in the other runs, are not too big of a danger for us, so just if we uh, break the backpack, we can just play with them for a while. We're gonna get two rushers from where we are coming from, and now there's gonna be two Changas. 
if you have the time for it, you can always swap back to the assault turret. And I like to like throw it somewhere like here, for example. Just to create some diversion from you and like maybe take off some aggro. And then we're just gonna stand here and shoot them while they are running up, basically. What we can do as well is just go always like more into the defense, basically, here. But I like to shoot them on distance just to keep them on distance. If we play too defensively, they will push us like very hard and we might get in some tr into some trouble, trouble doing that. Yeah. So we're gonna pick up our turrets and gonna enter the next part. So in this uh, path, we're gonna start out with a yellow sniper, which is quite dangerous for us, as well as three rushers. So what I usually do is we can throw, just throw our turret here to get some form of like aggro, maybe. And then I usually try to get the sniper first, but at the same time, rushers are very dangerous to us as well, because they do a lot of damage. So I try to kill the sniper because he can literally break our shield with like two shots. And basically after we kill those, we are safe for a bit. It only triggers when we run over like an imaginary line like here. So when we run over here, we got two shotgunners close, right side. They are only red though, so they are quite quick to kill. As well as in the back, we have uh, one sniper, one rusher, and two red drones. They are drones, but they are red, so they are pretty easy to kill for us, but that's even with that build. Um, so that's why we run obliterate as well for the big part of the run just because um, we don't really get too many stacks with the enemies being mostly red and purple. So we want to get ammo here and this is quite important now, the turrets. We're gonna run over here and we want to throw the turret basically around here. And then we're just gonna run back and we're gonna play around this truck. So I like to shoot that grenade if possible. There's a lot of snipers here, but now we, with the visibility being quite bad, it's not great for us. Um, but yeah, what we want to do is this truck here, where the red guy is shooting us through, you can shoot through them. And they can shoot through it. You can't really see through it, and that's the issue. And that's why the turret is there, because it usually keeps them from that position, because otherwise they love this position. And what we want to want to do here is, like I said in other runs as well, we basically want to start off right side. So we always want to start right to left. So we have cover on the left. If we start here and shoot everyone who's here, we are just safe from that position. And if we, if I would start like on the left, like if I would shoot that guy, if someone runs up there, I can't see him, and he's just gonna shoot me without my shield up. Um, you see like a lot of sniper lights here, so. Whenever you push out, you want to be aware that there's a lot of snipers. So you don't have to play it as aggressive as I do. You can always just let them push you a bit more and wait for them to basically go up there. Uh, I'm going to peek a bit just to make it a bit quicker and not too boring since there's not a lot going to happen. I'm going to get grenade spam, which is nice. You can always like tar target enemies with the turret, but for me being on the E key, but it doesn't really matter because for this guy our turret couldn't even see him, and at the same time our turret does not do a lot, which uh, just comes down to the build. Uh, for this one we can pick it up or deconstruct it, it doesn't really matter because we need to run a while anyway to get to the next area. And what we want to do again is refill our ammo. That's what we basically always want to do. Um, there is an ammo box here. This part can different can be different all the time as well, just because sometimes they hard push you and sometimes they don't. It's super weird. So we want to throw it to it. I usually throw it on top of this trunk. And I'm just gonna go over here. What we want to do here is I try to kill the mini tanks first. There's gonna be three mini tanks, so red, purple, and yellow. So we got yellow, then I'm gonna kill the troller because he's gonna hide otherwise the whole run. And medic, which is always nice. And after, it's just basically what I said in the first room. 
right to left. So if an enemy's there, he's a bigger danger than this guy, basically. And we always start right to left. So we got the mini tank pushing, now I can finally see him, which is nice. We still have one mini tank alive, which is the red one. So we kind of need to be aware of that. Uh, you can be pushed on your left side, I'll show it in a second. You can be pushed here technically, but it's super rare. Like, they usually don't do that. But it's something to be aware of, and we can just use our minimap to see if someone pushed us there. Yeah, this is basically just now about uh, shooting everyone, starting right to left. To be not too... basically to have some cover for the run itself and not being exposed to every enemy at the same time. That's why we do right to left. And yeah, we can... we want to pick up our turret here. Because then the next part is very close. So you can get some ammo if you're not too comfortable, but I usually just pick up some ammo lying around here. Because I don't want to run back and get the ammo box, that should be enough. For this area, I like to throw the turret on this garbage bag, just to give you guys uh, some fixed point basically. And we run, uh, run up here, as soon as we see secure the area, we're just gonna run back. Um, this room is usually easier if you play it with a more aggressive build, with more damage. But with this build, we kind of need to play it more defensive. So I want to get out the minigun here, just to save some ammo and kill these guys quickly. We're just gonna kill these three guys on the close chopper and go back. Because there's one Chunga in the far, as well as some drones on the right side spawning. Right there. Ideally, we want to get the drones first. Otherwise, Chunga is always a good target. But like I said, Chunga is not the biggest enemy here. It's more drones and medics and stuff like that. So we have, in the second wave, there's one chopper here, basically. If we can, we can just start shooting that from here. There's gonna be a medic as well, which is a bit of a pain, so we try to kill the drone. But don't be too aggressive, it's not worth it. There's gonna be one last wave. Um, there is one chopper very close to us, like here. We're gonna try to kill the Changa coming from there. At least kill his backpack. Just because he's very close to us. Then the drone, and then we just go back. We don't need to stress ourselves out here, we have all the time. Basically, I'll just shoot whatever I see. We killed the most dangerous stuff, we don't have any drones left, we have the lunchbox, but that's not too bad. And I just start to shoot whatever I can see. That actually is no one right now, because everyone is hiding from me. So it can sometimes be very bad to kill those lunchbox guys because they're gonna heal from their own lunchbox. They can only heal if they are within vision, so line of sight of the lunchbox, which basically um, means they will usually switch positions and go into an area where their own they can't get their own healing, and that allows us to kill them, because if they get healed with this build, we don't have enough damage to just shoot through it. Otherwise, you can always destroy the, the healing station, or like I call it, lunchbox. Um, if you can see it. So for this area, I usually like to put the turret on this camping chair and I'll run over here. I want to try to find a drone. So there's one, uh, two purple drones in this room. I'm going to try to find one and kill her or at least crack her back there. Just makes it easier for us. Um, there's this. There's two firework stations. I can show them later in detail. These allow us, basically, if we shoot them, they are... They're gonna blind an enemy that is uh, behind their cover. I don't know where this guy is going and why he went through the wall, but it's fine. We're gonna get a respawn of one dog, which we can just deactivate with the red markers again. And shoot the legs. However, dogs should never be our priority. As at least uh, minigun dogs. Because they just don't do much to us. Especially if we have a full memento and our shield up, these are not gonna kill us. Nice. Grenades, on the other hand, are way more dangerous. 
and yeah, we're basically gonna do the same stuff uh, we did for the other rooms, basically right to left. What we could do here as well, if you're feeling, if you're not feeling comfortable with the position I'm playing, you could always just go back, basically. Just run back and play it from, like, here or something, but I personally think this position is, is really nice, and if you put the turret, like, here or maybe somewhere around here, you basically get the alarm from your turret if someone is pushing you. But yeah, these are the uh, fireworks. Basically, they are in one control point in open world as well. And whenever we shoot them, it's gonna blind the enemy, which you did see on that drone. And that gives us a second or a two to kill her while she's not in cover and spamming us. So these are pretty nice and pretty handy for us to use. Uh, we're gonna enter the dark room. And this one is quite difficult, but we're gonna play it very, very safe again. So we just choose our favorite forklift. Um, as soon as we run in like a few meters, we're gonna see the dogs spawning. We just shoot them and run away. We have two waves of dogs. So the initials, initials being the first enemies in the room, usually. Um, we have one grenade dog and three sniper dogs. There will be an upcoming tutorial about dogs as well. Um, just need to start making that. Basically what we want to do is if we wait here, they are going to push us. Sniper dogs are fine, they're not the biggest danger to us. We can tank a few shots on the shield. And what we can always do as well is we can go back. I'm just going to try to shoot the legs here. But grenade dog, as you see, does a lot of damage to us. So now I killed grenade dog. When grenade dog dies, he's going to shock everything in a bigger radius, like you see here. And when sniper dog dies, like this guy, He's gonna EMP enemies in a bigger area. So that gives us the opportunity here to just go up a bit and take out the remaining dogs of the initial or the first wave. There's gonna be a second wave screw soon. So we just have to see, because yeah, like like now, um, you see, they didn't aggro on us, so they won't push us. So what we can do here is we just go in, try to fire some shots, but we're still not really aggroed, so I try to... We even got out of combat here. Now basically our only option is to get closer. They spawn around there and close to the exit, so what I want to try is maybe shoot one, yeah, and just go back. It's gonna be two grenade dogs, and grenade dogs are very dangerous for us. It's probably the biggest thing here. You can always com go completely back to the turret. I'm just gonna go stay here. Hope I don't die. You can always shoot the body, basically to crack the armor. It's just a bit harder to do than to shoot the legs. Legs is easier to, to kill, basically. But... We sometimes just can't see the legs, right? So at that point, we just sh shoot whatever we can see. Um, for grenade dogs, we can actually shock them with the Alma shock, which is pretty good. For the other dogs, it, like, they don't really care too much. So I'm just gonna crack him, you see the... Yeah, now he's cracked, we shoot his body, and he's dead. This room is quite dangerous, I would say, but we can always play it quite safely, just from staying back there. It's not gonna be the fastest, but it's gonna be very effective. And yeah, we're basically on our way to the last room before boss fights. I'm just gonna loot this chest, because I need <laughs> some exotic components, but I didn't get an Acosta this time. And basically... What we always want to do here as well is just get ammo, just for safety. We should be enough, we should have enough on ammo, but we're just gonna get ammo, why not? Um, for here, I'm gonna throw the turret right here, and we're gonna play around here. I like to open on the reds, just because they are dead, and it's one less enemy shooting me. But our biggest danger here is actually the grenade guys, so if we shoot the backpack, that means they can't spam us anymore. But this guy just doesn't care, he still spams us which is actually quite dangerous. 
We will get pushed from the left side, like here. Our turret will take some aggro. And it's mostly gonna be reds, so reds or purples pushing us. In that regard, we are pretty safe. There's a sniper up there. You see him now, I killed him. That's why we stay behind this shield, so we don't get sniped. So if we stay behind this roadblock here, we don't get sniped. Uh, the respawn is gonna be a bunch of rushers, like four or five. But it's mostly red enemies, and red enemies are just not a big danger to us, because they are dead quite quickly. It's like four or five shots. This can be very uh, unlucky here, like you saw for for me on this story, basically. I got pushed a lot, and that can be quite dangerous. But um, if you just are aware of them pushing you, you should be fine. And the turret takes a lot of aggro as well, basically. So yeah. Um, for here, we would swap to the chest. Just to give us more damage with... Um, us shooting the Marauders, we should be fine on damage. Because we can build up stacks easily. So what we do here is, I just go to this container on my left, and I just start killing the Reds. There's gonna be four to five Red enemies close to us. So they will be on the right side, or like here on the left side. And what I wanna do is, I wanna kill them before I start shooting the Marauder. Because otherwise they're gonna push me. And that will be re really annoying. So we have one more, I don't really know where he is. I tried to find him. But I'm just gonna throw the turret, like, there. And we're just gonna start shooting the Marauder. Immediate yeah. Medical assistance yeah, that's unlucky. Okay, now we have actually... ...very... ...unfortunate situation that the second Marauder pushed us as well, because sometimes it doesn't happen. But we just try to make the best out of it. The only thing we can really do here is just shoot more, one Marauder. And hope the turret saves us. There is a little red nudge on the other body here. You can see it with the yellow hit marks. If we shoot that, that EMP is in for a second. When we sh kill the first, we want to be sure because there will be respawns, as well as sometimes the mini tanks pushing us. So we're just gonna start to shoot the second one. But you see on the mini map now I get pushed from the left side. That's something we want to be aware of. And now the spawn on the right, which should be back there. I'm gonna use the time in between just to shoot the Marauder because we still need to kill that guy and he's still a big danger to us. It's not really worth shooting the red like hinges under the rotors. It makes him immobile for a few seconds, but or if you kill every single one of those, it makes him immobile. But we don't really care too much about it. Alright, so we killed both now. Um, and now we basically just start killing enemies. There is gonna be, yeah, usually mini tanks pushing, so it's gonna be yellow and purple mini tank pushing us. That's something we need to be aware of, these mini tanks are very dangerous. And there's gonna be two drones on the boat. We don't worry too much about these, because the drones can't pathfind to us, so they are literally no danger. Like, the drones won't do anything to us. We get a respawn here, I like to take my SMG out. There's gonna be three enemies coming from this chopper. I like to take the SMG out and kill them with it, just because we save some AR ammo. And basically, that's where we just start shooting everything. Um, yeah, mini tanks are a danger. We got quite lucky this time that they didn't push us sooner. And then we just need to kill the guys on the boat. There's gonna be a few respawns for a lot like red and one purple enemy, usually, per wave. And these can be either here, on the side, or there on the left side. Whenever we start killing and get enough kills, we're gonna get the last chopper coming in. Which lands on the boat. And that chopper, which is arriving now, is gonna have one Chunga in it. We don't worry too much about it, because it's a Chunga and he will take some time to actually get to us. So for now we're just gonna start shooting all the red enemies, there's so many red enemies that they don't take too many hits. So we have that medic here. Try to change chain the Chunga and try to get the medic quickly because otherwise he and his stupid drone just gonna pick up everyone. So I play this quite aggressive now to just kill the medic, but like you see I can take a lot of hits on my shield. We crack the Chunga. Basically, if we just stay around this area here, we are pretty safe. 
Yeah, pretty safe. And that's gonna be those. Yeah, that's gonna be it. Um, going back over the builds for for boss room, I just use a striker chest, and I've I've been using two blue cores here, but you can still go for three blue cores in the boss fight. We just need the damage to kill the marauders. And yeah, obliterate works better for the mo most part of it because there's going to be so many red enemies. We can't really stack too many striker stacks basically. That's why we run like this. And yeah, let's see what what time we got. But uh, I want to stress this out. It does not matter what time you get. If you if you manage to finish it, and if, especially if it's a first run, um, it's always a really nice achievement. And that's what we are here for to show some strategies and a specific build or two to get your first time clear. Yeah, we are on 28.37, which is a time I'm happy with. And it might take you longer. Like I said, it might not work with these strats for the first time. For example, especially boss room can be quite difficult. And you could do the same thing I did, but you just get railed by the Marauder. And there's sadly not a lot I can do. But if you die, or if, if you die on boss room there, you could just try again, basically. Um, what I would recommend for boss room, if you want to be a bit quicker, would just be go for striker backpack. Something like this, and maybe one piece of Grupo, or even Coyote, and that is just so much more damage. However, you give up a lot of survivability. Um, but yeah, that's gonna be it for the third part of this series with Legendary Roosevelt Saddle. Um, if you are looking for something for Capital and UA, you can find that on my channel as well. Thanks for tuning in, and... GG's later. So here we want to start on the red enemies. There's usually four or five on the right or left side. We want to kill them quickly because it gives us the freedom to shoot the Marauder. I'm just going to throw the turret over there, make sure the reds are dead, and then I'm just going to start shooting the Marauder. There's a little, little red notch on his like underbody, basically where I'm shooting now. You can see the yellow hit marks. And that EMPs him for a second. That's the best we can do. It's not really worth to shoot the weak points on the rotors. He has like four red boxes, which are weak points. But if we destroy all of them, all it does is he can't. Vital science okay, critical. Interesting. Uh, he can't move anymore, which is not really helpful here. And we miss the damage there. So I'm just gonna try to kill that. I know I got pushed on my left. Try to take this guy out. And we just try to kill him quickly. Nice. So we have one. What we can do now is check if one is close to us, like one enemy. So like this guy. Uh, what can happen here is that the mini tanks, which are on the boat, push us. So that's something we want to be aware of. And it's a bit RNG dependent. So we see this guy pushing here. The second Marauder is not aggroed on us because he's too far away. But if we are sure, we have like pretty clear path. Like I see something on the mini map here. I want to clear that. There's a mini tank. Uh, we're just gonna start to shoot the Marauder as soon as we feel safe here. Because for now the Marauder is not our enemy. We can even go as far as killing like more enemies. Because right now he's not triggered on us, right? So, we are pretty safe. But I would love to take out these two mini tanks. And be safe. So we get a respawn, which is one chopper. We just take our SMG, the secondary or the minigun to kill them. Because um, we need the ammo for the main weapon. So we get pushed again. And I'm just gonna start to shoot the guys on the boat. You don't need to worry about the drones. The drones cannot hit you. They cannot hurt you. So I'm just gonna shoot the guys on the boat. Kill them off. There's gonna be one more chopper, which in this case is one Changa. But we don't need to worry about that for now, because he will take a while to come into us. So in this case, I'm just gonna not trigger the Marauder. And just basically start killing all the enemies. There's gonna be a bunch of reds. They spawn either on the left side like they do now, with the one medic. Or they spawn on the right side, which is uh, usually pretty random. We don't need to worry about the Changa, but we need to remember him. Because it can be very annoying. 
if he pushes us and we just forget it. But yeah, for now we just try to get the medic somehow. And yeah, he's gonna pick up everyone, so ideally we're gonna get the drone at least. And basically, if we stay in that area here, we are in itself pretty safe. I'm gonna push out a bit to get the medic. But in this area, we are pretty safe. We can stay away from everything for a while. Just gonna get this guy to... That they stops annoying me. I don't know where the Chunga is. I'm kind of missing the Chunga. Oh, there he is. He woke up. Alright, he's throwing. He's just gonna chain... Shoot him. We are kind of running out of ammo, but for now it's fine because we have... Uh, we have everything killed besides the Marauder. So we can look around to loot some ammo from the floor. We are even out of combat here. There was some ammo. And basically what... There's a few positions we could use now. I'm just gonna go on the boat. But this only works if you did not trigger this guy. Um, if you did trigger, I would just usually stay back there where I, where I was standing. And you could just basically do this. What always helps out a lot is if we just throw it through there in the hopes that it aggros on him. Not like on the turret, not on me. And then just shoot the same spot to get off the MP, which disables him for a few seconds. And we keep going. Alright. That's gonna be it. Um we're gonna see what time we got. Uh, here is ammo as well, so I could have gotten ammo here as well. And yeah, that's basically